I'm good to go to check the accuracy of bevel stops on a compound miter saw. I made adjustments and I want to make some test cuts. And I'll show you how and why the test cuts work. Come take a look what's uh, here on the saw stable here. We're going to use some geometry. And let me explain how this is going to work. In geometry from elementary school you know that uh, if we have a line A and on line A at point uh, I don't know at point X we draw a line segment like so we just created two adjacent angles one would be an acute an acute angle and the other one the bigger one is the obtuse angle and uh, because these adjacent angles are on a straight line the sum sum spelled that way the sum of the acute and the obtuse angles will be exactly 180 degrees because 180 degrees is half a circle and uh, there you go one straight line is uh, or could stand in as a diameter of a circle. So an acute and obtuse uh, supplementary or adjacent angles are <clears throat> 180 degrees. We are gonna use this idea here for the next bit of geometry that I have on this paper here. You've seen this one as well in uh, elementary or middle school that uh, two parallel lines intersected by or transverse by a transverse line will create a bunch of angles that uh, some of them are similar uh, this will be an acute angle and this will be an obtuse angle there on that side of the parallel that, that side of uh, the uh, one of the parallel lines where uh, the uh, parallel and the transverse intersect and uh, we know that this angle here will have exactly the same size as the adjacent angle up here and this obtuse angle will have the same angle as uh, this obtuse will have the same angle as uh, this one there <coughs> and um, how this is gonna work with the test cuts is that I have here a piece of cardboard cut this is gonna be our wood this is gonna be standing in for a piece of scrap wood with which we can verify the accuracy of our bevel stops. Say, uh, let me just put it here this way so you can see. Okay, this is two parallel lines here and I intersected it with a transverse line there. The intersection was done by a scissors, a pair of scissors with the uh, with this with this geometry layout here we know that uh, this angle here is uh, just as big as uh, just a sec let me just extend this line here a little bit here and a little bit here so it makes uh, more sense so this angle here is the same size as this angle here And uh, we also know that this angle here has the same size as this angle here. Okay. And uh, this one, this one, and this one add up to be 180 degrees. Come on in closer a little bit. There. There. This acute angle and this obtuse angle add up to be exactly 180 degrees and if we have an acute angle here and an acute angle here and we have an acute angle here we also have an acute angle here consequently if the acute and the obtuse here add up add up to be 180 an acute and an acute do not add up to be 180 now how is this gonna work there's the two acute angles this acute angle here on this 
part of the uh, cardboard here is exactly the same size as this acute angle here okay it's the same thing just on the other side of the cardboard you see that acute angle there it is the same as that acute angle there so to make a test cut I'm gonna cut a piece of wood with two parallel edges along one line and I'm gonna flip only one of the boards and by uh, only one side of the uh, now two halves and that way two acute angles will rotate to uh, to be adjacent angles now and we know that the two acute angles do not ever add up to be 180 degrees so therefore if they don't and if they don't add up to be 180 degrees and I grab this zoom out a little bit but you can see it's a combination square I grab this combination square and I put the uh, piece of wood along the, the edge of a combination square or any kind of straight line we will have a gap we will have a gap here see where my finger is pointing we're gonna have a gap here if this edge here is gonna be straight and these two are acute then it makes a gap here these two have to be exactly 90 degree angles to not have a gap here okay so I hope that's uh, making sense and uh, what do you know I already have a piece of wood here that I cut and uh, I marked the front on it oops sorry I marked the front on it so when I rotate the pieces I know exactly uh, how much uh, to rotate because 90 degree rotation is not gonna be enough I need to rotate exactly 180 degrees so what I'm doing is I have an acute angle here maybe maybe in theory and another acute angle here and since I have an acute angle there I must have the same on the back side and if I rotate these two acute angles side by side if this cut is not exactly 90 degrees there and 90 degrees there there's gonna be a gap here when I check it with a straight edge so let's see what we got here I rotated it around and let's see how my pieces check out with a straight edge I'm gonna grab it so you guys can see it whoops thereabouts you can see that the square is tight against the the wood here there is no gap between the blade of the square and the edge of the wood so uh, the piece is straight and on this side do we have a gap there nope I don't see no gap no gap there so therefore I can verify I'm just waiting for the camera to focus a little bit I can verify it this way and this piece is straight okay ideally uh, in a shop you can do it in a way that you don't have to work around the camera but uh, you kind of get the idea there I can't hold it in one hand to uh, have you see it but uh, you get the idea I did the same thing with the 45 degree bevels I'll show you how they look like they are gonna be a little bit different now what do we have here I have a piece of uh, wood that's marked for the front side and I checked with it the left 45 degree bevel stock what I did was uh, tilted the saw and this was cut in this position if this one is a 45 degree angle and this one is a 45 degree angle when I rotate the two acute angles side by side the two 45s must make a square corner here and that square corner 
can be easily checked by this combination square something like that and uh, let's see what we've got here do we really have a 90 degree corner here let's see I say we don't it's out the uh, stock of the square here in my left hand is tight against the block of wood and when I try to close the gap I can't there's a little bit of light showing through here it's not possible when I make that little uh, light disappear here I just open the gap here between the two wood blocks there's no gap here where my uh, thumb is holding the wood there but uh, if I make these two pieces of uh, wood tight against both the stock and the blade of the square there is a gap here and you can see light coming through it consequently my bevel stop for the left 45 degree angle is incorrect it needs adjustment I made another test cut for my for my uh, right 45 degree my right 45 degree uh, bevel and this is how the uh, piece of wood looked like and again when I rotate this piece sorry the two acute angles must form 90 degrees here so let's see how that fares I'm gonna set my square this way and uh, check it this way now all the pieces there together and let's see how we look that's pretty close there we have a little bit of a gap here as well but I'm wondering and this is why you need to start with a straight piece of wood in the first place I'm suspecting that this piece of wood these two sides are not parallel and I'm gonna check I'm gonna check my suspicion with the same square just to measure the outside of it like we did before there let's see what do we have here mm-hmm yeah that's pretty impeccable there it's tight tight against uh, here against the stock of the square tight against the uh, blade of the square alrighty it's just uh, it's just my piece is uh, slightly tapering that's why it didn't work perfectly on the inside so uh, but you can see that this corner is a 90 degree corner so that's how you can check your bevels and uh, your bevel stops on your compound miter so and I do recommend that you don't start cutting compound miter where a miter angle might uh, say uh, mess up your uh, measurements or your uh, uh, lines of sight and just instead just do a square cut do a left 45 do a right 45 and uh, just test one thing at a time okay so that's how you do it